everyone and welcome to another Make It Monday. I'm Sarah with Beyond Fabric and today we are going to start a window treatment series. So not only do panels, balances provide a little bit of light blocking and privacy, they can also add a little bit of flair to a room, some softness and warmth. So today we're going to start with a basic unlined rod pocket panel. All right, so with this project, there is not a pattern because your windows will be your pattern, which means we have to do a little bit of math. But if you don't want to do the math and you have a standard window and normal 54 inch wide fabric, home deck fabric, at least 54 inches wide, then you could just do one panel and you could skip ahead to when we figure out your length. Now, everybody else that you may have a wider window, then we need to figure out how many widths of fabric are we going to need because that will determine how many panels you need for your window. So if you have a 64 inch window, we know that 54 inch wide fabric is not gonna cover it. So we're gonna have to have at least two panels and that will still give you fullness. If you like really full panels, then you will either have to do a width and a half per panel, which means you'll be sewing them together or you will just have more panels. So that will be in another video. So I would just focus on if you have a, a window that is wider than 40, honestly, wider than 45 inches, you need two panels or it will look a little naked and we don't want that. So if you have a window less than that, then one panel will be ample. So let's figure out how we need to cut that piece to make our panel. All right, so for our area that we need to cover, I need a finished length of 65 inches. And I need a width that covers 32 inches. My fabric is a standard home deck fabric, so it is at least 54 inches wide. So I'm going to go for a little bit more than one and a half fullness and just use my entire width of my fabric. Now we need to determine what our cut size will be for our length. So if you have your rod, which I would encourage you hanging your rod beforehand because that also determines your rod pocket size, you will measure from the very top of your rod down to the floor. If you do not want it touching the floor, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Don't worry about subtracting anything yet. So measure from the top of the rod to the floor. Now, because we are doing a rod pocket, we need to know what size pocket to make. So the general rule of thumb is with a round rod, if your diameter is one, you're gonna double it. So it would be a two inch rod pocket. So whatever your diameter is of your rod, double that and that will be your rod pocket. So if you have a huge three inch diameter rod, then you're gonna have a six inch rod pocket. So we have a just small tension rod, so we only need one inch for our rod, so we need a two inch rod pocket. So we have two inches for our rod pocket. Now, because this is a panel, anything over 60 inches, I like to do a double three inch hem, and honestly, if it's over 90 inches, I like to do a double four inch hem because that allows good weight so it hangs well. So we have a total of 65, so we're just gonna do a double three inch hem at the bottom. So we need three inches down here. And when I say double, that's because when we go to hem it, we're going to turn it up three and turn it another three. So in total, we will need six inches added for our hem. And we're gonna do the same thing with our rod pocket. So two inch plus two inch will give us four inches added for our topper. Now, earlier when I was saying measure it to the floor, if you don't want it to be on the floor, well, with a rod pocket, and this is the only panel that you really have to do this with because the rest of them do not shear up on the rod. When your fabric shears up on your rod, it actually raises your fabric below. So you have to allow a little bit of ease. So, Here's another general rule of thumb to follow. If you have like a one inch, and I had to write it down. If you have three quarters um, to a, which would be a one and a half inch rod pocket, to a two inch rod pocket, you're gonna add a half inch ease to it. So if you want it on the floor, then you need to add a half inch to your measurement. 
which we did. Now, if you don't want it on the floor and you want it just slightly, don't worry about adding ease because it will ease right off your floor. Now, if you have a larger rod pocket, then you have to add more ease to it. Now, if this is a little bit overwhelming and too much, you can always finish your curtain to a certain point, hang it up, and then mark where you want the hem to be. So if you would like to do that, you can as well, or just add in a little bit of ease, or don't add ease, and it'll be off the floor. If you want it to puddle, so puddling up on your floor, then whatever this measurement is here, then you need to add some to it so that it will puddle on your floor. So once you have figured out how you want your panel to look, we want it to be rod pocket on the floor. We have a double three inch hem. We have a double two inch rod pocket because we have a one inch round rod and we have added ease. We're gonna end up with the measurements. We have 65 and 69. Should have 75 and a half, if I did my math correctly, for our cut size. So that is our total length cut size. And then for our width, again, one and a half fullness, I only need 48 inches. I'm gonna use the entire width minus our selvage. So let's take a look at our fabric. Now this is the fabric that we will be using for our panel and I have already cut it. If you have something with a pattern, then you do want to try to use that pattern to get your first straight edge for the bottom and then square it up accordingly. Sometimes, a lot of times, unfortunately, fabric is not printed straight. And so you kind of have to take your, visually you want it to look straight. So you have to find that pattern first and then square up the sides with it. Now onto the width of the fabric. We had plenty of width to work with for our window. Um, if we did not and we needed to use all of our fabric, including the selvage, which I don't recommend. Um, and the reason why, is your selvage is a tighter fabric weave than your the rest of it. That's how they make it. So on your selvage, if you're using it, it will draw up and do some wonky things. So if you have to use your selvage, then you need to come into the selvage and make little clips into the selvage. This has got a big selvage all the way through. So just do clips periodically through that, and that will give it some ease so that when you do use it for your side hem, it won't do wonky stuff. So if you have to use the selvage, put some clips in it. Um, if not, you wanna trim off your selvages and square up your piece of fabric. Now let's start with the hem. To make our hem, we needed a double three, so that's six inches. So we are gonna take our ruler, which happens to be six inches, yay for us and we are going to mark it at six inches. If you do not have a ruler that is six inches, that is fine. You can take any ruler and line it up and just make more marks. We are using a friction pin that disappears with heat. we have our mark made, we are going to fold up to that line and press. Once that, that is pressed up to the line, you're going to fold it one more time and press. Next, take and put a couple of clip or pins, excuse me, into the hem to keep it in place. Next, we're gonna take this over to the machine and we are going to stitch right along the edge there. So a quarter inch from your fold here, straight across. 
Now we will not backstitch on the beginning and the end, and the reason why we'll see a little bit later, we're gonna remove some bulk out of there, so we don't want to lock that stitch in right there. Um, we do want to lengthen our stitch though, so I have lengthened my stitch, and again, I am sewing, um, using this as my guide, and sewing right along the edge. Now remember, we have our hand back here to just help us guide the fabric through. We're not pulling. If you pull, you can break a needle. And as I said a minute ago, don't backstitch. And I did what I said not to do because um, it is habit, but that's all right. We do have these fabulous little seam rippers here at the store that are locally made. So we're just going to remove those and not worry about it. So a little extra step, but now we're moving on. Now that we have our bottom hemmed, we need to hem the sides. So I have allowed a double one inch hem for the sides. Um, I really don't like to go less than a one inch double hem just to make sure that no fabric peaks when your panel is hung. So the same thing like we did with the hem, we're going to do with the sides. But this time we are going to mark it at two inches. Now that we have made the mark all the way down, just like before, you're going to fold up to the line and press, and then we'll fold over one more time. some clips or pins. Now, right here in this corner, this is a little thick, so we're gonna remove some of this bulk. So if you open this up, we can actually remove this part of just the hem. So that's why we were not back stitching because you're just gonna have to clip a little bit of those threads. All right, so we want to keep at least three eighths here showing. So there's where our crease is, go right above that crease. And then this bottom part will come out as well. And that's just so it's not so thick right there. Fold back over. And now it lays so much better. Also, if you have a panel that is 72 or longer, and that's usually, that's my general rule right there, um, I put a drapery weight in this side over here. So what that drapery weight does when you have the longer panels, your side hems tend to like draw up a little bit. So that weight will help keep it hanging nice and weighted. But since our panel is 65, we do not have to put drapery weights. So we can move on. So we have one side hem pressed and ready to go. We are going to go over to the machine and we are gonna stitch just like with our hem right along the edge. We are gonna start right along here. Now with this, I do go back and hand stitch that close, just a simple blind whip stitch. 
um, but it's totally up to you on whether you want to do that. Nobody should be looking at the bottom of your panel. Now we'll be using my stiletto here because there is a little bit of pulp. Do back stitch and continue on. Again, we are holding just for guiding, not pulling. Now that our side is hemmed, go repeat those steps for the other side. Now that we have hemmed our sides, we just have to finish up with our rod pocket for the top. So we have allotted a two inch rod pocket, so that means a double two inch, four inches is what we need. And the reason why we want that doubled is because we want a little bit more body at the top. Um, if not, we would need to add some buckram to it, which we're not gonna do, because this again is a simple rod pocket panel. So we need to measure up four inches, just like we did for the hem and the sides, and make a mark. Then we're going to press the fabric up to that mark and then fold it over and press again. So now that we have hemmed up our sides and the bottom, we need to make our rod pocket. So we have a double two inch rod pocket. So that's a two inch showing and we are doubling it because we want a little bit more body up there at the top. If not, we would have to add buckram in here and we don't want to have to do that because again, this is an easy rod pocket panel. So we are going to measure up four inches and make a mark just like we did with him in the sides and then we're going to press up to that mark and then fold over so make your mark just as before we're going to put some pins in this top and then we're going to go over and stitch it up. All right now head over to that machine. Make sure to back stitch. Now you have your rod pocket and your rod can go inside. Now that you have finished sewing your rod pocket panel, make sure to go and press those hems nice and pretty before you put it on your rod and then you can hang your rod pocket panel. We appreciate you joining us. This is being gifted to Brooks brother, Peter. Peter, we hope you enjoy your new panel. And if you use this video to make a panel, please comment below any of your feedback. Um, hopefully it helps and we will be posting more window treatment videos coming up soon. So please check those out. Make sure to click that bell so you get notified every time we post a new video. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you for joining.